Um, so yes, welcome once again. Uh, just a quick note about the Accelerate Learning Series. Uh, so it is part of the Accelerate Summit, um, which is brought to you by the fine folks you can see on your screen there, uh, a collection of um, local organizations, local to Simcoe County that uh, collaborate and put together and volunteer their time to bring to, bring to uh, uh, the community once a year, the Accelerate Summit, which is uh, our, our region's largest uh, small business uh, conference. Uh, so that takes place every October. This year will be year eight. Uh, so we're hoping you can join us for that. And then throughout the year, we put on smaller events like this, the, the Accelerate Learning Series. So huge thank you to our partners that you can see listed on the screen there. Um, without them, we simply couldn't pull off this event or the Accelerate Summit uh, that takes place, uh, as I say, annually in October. So uh, once again, my name is Dave Hyde, manager of the Small Business Center. Very happy to have you with us here today and uh, without further ado I'd like to hand you over to our digital service squad team lead Melissa who will be discussing how to boost your social engagement thanks so much good morning everyone thanks Dave for the introduction can everybody hear me maybe I can just get a thumbs up perfect want to make sure that's clear first <laughs> awesome so First of all, I just wanted to thank you for taking the time this morning to join it with me and with our Digital Service Squad team. Uh, before I get into our agenda today, I'm just gonna share a little bit about myself. So as Dave mentioned, um, I am the Digital Service Squad member and lead here in Barrie in Simcoe County. Um, I'm also a content creator and I also do some mentoring through the Henry Brunick Entrepreneurship Center um, focused on social media. And within the last three years, I've spent a lot of time um, researching and, you know, in the trenches of learning how to navigate social media so that you can get in front of your audience. Um, and there is my stuff if you want to give me a follow or you'd like to connect. So before we go into the agenda, we're just going to talk about some quick webinar logistics. Um, so as Dave mentioned, the questions in the chat. Um, if you have questions throughout the webinar, feel free to drop them in the chat. Dave can um, get to those and we're going to have our Q&A portion at the end. Um, Dave also mentioned this, please make sure to uh, keep your mics on mute. Just sometimes there's a lot of background noise that can cause some distractions for everybody trying to tune in and listen. Um, also, we had this in the description of the webinar to make sure that you have your cell phone. Um, if you are watching this webinar from your cell phone, um, you can still do what we're going to be covering today. It might be a little bit more challenging, but um, if you have, you know, your computer uh, geared up to watch this, have your cell phone out and ready to go because we're going to be using it just to do some hashtag research on your Instagram. And also I'm going to be referring to an Excel handout that has a variety of resources and links that um, I've put in there for you as a takeaway for after this webinar is completed. So um, when this is over, within the next 24 hours, you're going to be receiving an email. And in that email, you're going to get the recording of this so that, um, you know, if I may be going too quickly over a certain topic that's new to you, um, that you want to review and you want to just hone in on those few slides that I cover, you can watch that. Um, also, the Excel handout is going to have a list of resources that um, I've compiled for you to take a look at and go in and do your research based off of the topics that we cover. Um, and there's a few other fun things that um, is going to be in there for you to have. And lastly, I just wanted to say that these this webinar series is created for you based off of all of the work that our digital Main Street team has done within the last few months. We've heard a lot of business owners talking about challenges that they're facing, especially now throughout this, this time. And we've really made these webinar, webinars geared up so that um, they're available for people that are like just beginning in their digital marketing um, journey to people that may have a little bit more experience. So there might be things that um, are seeming like they're a little bit complex or maybe I go through a little bit quickly I recommend to um, note that and then maybe you can visit that later. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say, um, don't get overwhelmed and take what you need out of this webinar today. 
So I want to give a shout out to the other Digital Service Squad members. So this is Laura. She did an awesome presentation last week. Um, she is our photographer. She also has her business, Laura Joy Photography here in Barrie. She's amazing. And then this is Chris, our e-commerce and analytics lead, who is going to be hosting a webinar next Wednesday, same time with Dustin, who's super awesome and I'm happy that he's good with numbers because I'm definitely not. <laughs> and then this is Dustin, our web developer, who's also gonna be doing a webinar next week with Chris. And um, he is super, super creative, absolutely awesome. And I've seen him absolutely flourish within this program. So shout out to these guys. And then this is Marlene, our designer, who is super creative. Absolutely awesome. She actually just spent the last 10 years living in Hong Kong, helping with large scale brands. She's extremely creative and I'm super excited to have her on our team as well. I'm just gonna take one second just to ask everybody to please, if you can mute your mics, just cause I'm hearing a little bit of background noise. I just wanna make sure everyone's muted there. Awesome. So this is what we're gonna be covering today. So first off, we're gonna talk about what are social media algorithms. So this is kind of like the foundation that we really need to understand before we even talk about um, generating a following and all of that fun stuff. Second, we're gonna talk about generating a following. Third, we're gonna go into hashtags and how you can use that to get your content seen more. So that's what we're gonna have our phones out for. And then we're gonna talk about um, stories. So what are Instagram stories and how you can use them? and also um, how you can optimize them in a fun way. And then we're gonna talk about collaboration methods. So things that you can be doing within your local ecosystem, both online and in person to basically help you grab more engagement with your audience. And then we're gonna cover how you can do a giveaway on social media. Um, and we're gonna have a Q and A section at the end. So first things first, let's talk about algorithms. So. You may have heard about social media algorithms before. Um, in a nutshell, basically what it is, is it's deciding what people are seeing in their social media feed. So all social media platforms have algorithms in place. And the reason why they're in place is because there's no way that it would be humanly possible for you to see absolutely every single thing that a person or a business is posting on social media. So you see on social media, and I just have Facebook here as an example, the Facebook feed, um, you see based off of what you interact with. So chances are, you know, if you're constantly posting or engaging with and um, clicking on things or liking and commenting on things that are all about a certain topic, then you're going to continue to see more of that. So what that means when it comes to brands and what that means for business owners is that it can be challenging to get your content in front of people. So one of the challenges that I constantly see through Digital Main Street and also with my clients is, you know, I've got this content, I've created my brand, but I am not getting it in front of people and people are not seeing it. You know, I'm posting things on my Facebook page, I'm being consistent, um, I'm liking the aesthetic of everything, I feel like it's engaging, but nobody is seeing it. So I encourage you, and I really can't like stress this enough, to do your due diligence after this webinar whenever you have time and really look into what social media algorithms are. Like I could literally do an entire presentation into the details of how you can like break the algorithm, not break it, but break through the algorithm. Um, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're talking about engagement and how you can get your your followers and fans to engage with your content. So um, the Excel document that I created that's gonna be going out after this webinar has a really awesome article, actually two really awesome articles that go through like the nitty gritty of the 2021 updates of the Facebook algorithm and then also for Instagram. So highly suggest to check that out, take the time to kind of look into that because you know, you can spend all day posting content and being consistent with content, but if you don't have a clear understanding of, you know, how the algorithm works and how you can work the algorithm, then um, it's going to be really challenging for you. So this is kind of a visual, just to give you an idea. I actually took this directly from the Facebook article that talks about the Facebook algorithm. 
in the Excel sheet that you're going to get after this webinar. So this is directly from that to show you, um, you know, when content starts out, it's going, it's going through as like an inventory. It's basically going through the integrity processes of Facebook. And then it's going into relevant top post based off of what you like. So ranking score, and then it's going on to your newsfeed. And this is just an example from Facebook. Um, Facebook's algorithm is the most intense. All other social media platforms do have them, but this is just to kind of give you a visual to the words that we were just talking about of like, you know, not every single thing that you post is going to be seen by every single person that is following you. So now we're going to talk about what you can be doing to kind of get ahead of that and make sure that, you know, people are actually seeing the stuff that you want out there. So a few slides just covering on generating a following. So there's this really cool video that I actually watched on Netflix and it's called Chef. If you haven't heard of it, um, should still be on there. But um, the movie is basically about uh, a man who's a chef and he's tired of working in the restaurant that he's in and he really wants to just have his own thing. So he ends up actually making this food truck and um, I believe it's in California. And him and his business partner, they start selling Cuban food out of this food truck. And it's really cool because his son actually tags along with him. And I believe he's like in high school or something. And um, his son decides to start posting where they're going based off of their journey because they're, they're not just in one stagnant place with the food truck. They're going to like different cities. Um, he basically posts about their journey. And so that's why with generating a following, I wrote here, document instead of create. So as business owners and as entrepreneurs, sometimes I hear this all the time, like, I don't have time to come up with content or I don't have time to, you know, sit down and think about what kind of stuff I actually like want to put out there and to have people see. The beauty of your business is that you are in the trenches of it and you are there every single day. Um, you know, some business owners that are on this call probably have employees that could tell stories. Um, you know, you have customers that can tell stories. So I encourage you to think about your social media posting and content as documenting instead of creating it because you have the ability throughout your day to basically document what's happening. And it could be seen to you like it's small little things, but, you know, there's always ways that you can figure out how to tell a story. So that's kind of why I had that food truck there, um, just to kind of talk about that movie and give you an example to that. So continuing for genu or genu generating a following, this is basically me telling you to go live. <laughs> so a lot of the times, um, you know, we think about how we have to just make a post on our actual page, whether it's like on our Instagram no. grid or Facebook or link LinkedIn page, whatever platform it is that you're using. Something okay. that I encourage if you have, oh, just want to make sure everybody has their mics muted. Awesome. Thank you. So if you have a Facebook page, one thing that you can do to kind of ramp up this excitement, and again, I'll always refer back to the algorithm, is to go live. So I'm not going to name the client, but there's somebody that we were helping through Digital Main Street, and she actually was having a really difficult time um, throughout everything that's happening in the world, getting people into her store and purchasing her retail products. So what she decided to do was once a week, she hosted um, this thing called Jewelry Jam and she made it really fun and engaging for her followers and she went live and she just showed different pieces of jewelry that she had. And the first one that she did, she actually sold 10 units of product. So this is something that, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit intimidating to go up on camera, um, but you don't need to, you can pre-plan it. You don't need to just go up live and just spontaneously come up with something. You can plan, you know, maybe it's a product um, that you want to showcase or some type of like cool tutorial or whatever it is. Um, I encourage you to go live and that will help you to break through the algorithm. 
The other thing that I wanted to mention is Instagram TV. So there's a feature that's on Instagram that you can do kind of a longer tailored video. And you basically in your actual page can give a like 10, I think it's yeah, 10 second snapshot um, of what's gonna be in that Instagram TV. And then it's a longer ta tailored video so that your follower base can go in and watch you. So like maybe you have, um, I don't know, some type of service-based business that you wanna talk about an educational topic and you wanna showcase and have that credibility. And you have you know, a video where you're talking about some educational content about that topic. Whatever it is, this is gonna boost you and put you in a level of authority so that people know like, okay, this person knows what they're talking about. So in the Excel document that is gonna be sent out after today's webinar, I have gone ahead and I have found a link of how to do a Facebook Live. So if you've never done one before, you can click that and you can go through and it'll teach you how to do a Facebook Live. And then also um, how to do an Instagram TV. And then it has a little bit more detail of like how that actually works. So for generating a following, um, this is probably something I should have put at the beginning, um, but that's okay to make sure that you're posting consistently with relevant content. So if you had the opportunity to catch Marlene and Laura's webinars, um, they did a really great job at talking about having content that is aligned with your brand and your business. So when I say relevant, I mean, ensuring that you're not posting stuff just to post. You've actually taken that giant step back and you've thought about, okay, what are my content themes? Like how exactly do I want to hone in on what it is that I'm trying to share? Um, so if you haven't done that, this is something that I encourage you to really begin with is bulk those content into themes. And when I show you the Excel sheet at the end of this presentation, it'll give you a visual of a little bit more clear understanding of what I'm talking about here. Um, but if you're posting consistently, and your content is relevant to your audience, then you know that's also going to help get your content seen um, and to create more engagement with your audience base. So there's a really great um, resource that Marlene also talked about in her presentation, and I just wanted to reinforce how powerful this tool is. It's called Answer the Public. So this is actually a, um, I believe it's a keyword search tool that's um, linked up with Google. And what you can do is you can actually go into the search box on this website and you can type anything that you want. And it's going to basically spit out this giant pinwheel of things that are on Google that will help you to get more content ideas. So maybe, you know, you're in real estate and you are like, oh, I don't know what kind of stuff that I should be posting. Literally, if you type in real estate into this keyword search tool, it's going to generate this pinwheel of things that are going to pull up on Google that's going to give you um, ideas for things that you can post about. And then from there, you can basically figure out like, what are your content themes that you would want to create? So I'll give you another example. Let's say you have an all natural skincare product that is, you know, eco-friendly and um, cruelty free and all natural. You can literally go into answer the public and you can type in like non-toxic or eco-friendly or whatever it is, and it's gonna pull up a whole bunch of options for you. So that is um, a really great tool that I really, really like. So another thing that you can be doing, and you can do this for all of your social media platforms that you have that you're using for your business, is to follow this 10-10-10 method. So there's something that I like to do for my Instagram that I've kind of used to grow. Um, and Basically, the first 10 is engage, the second 10 is check in, and then the third 10 is play. So what I mean by this is the first 10 minutes. So let's say um, maybe you don't have, because in total, this will be 30 minutes. Maybe you don't have 30 minutes in your day to sit in front of your phone or be on you know, your social media platform to do this. Maybe it's that you decide to do this for 30 minutes a week. It's literally however much time that you have to Put towards growing your following and how serious you are about it. Um, so for the first 10, it's taking 10 minutes to engage. So let's say that you own a coffee shop and you are trying to, um, you know, engage with other people that might want to come into your store. 
maybe you go onto other local coffee shop um, platforms. So maybe you're on Instagram and you look up another coffee shop and you see that they've posted a really cool uh, new latte that they've just announced take time to actually comment on that and engage with them. And maybe it's a comment instead of just clicking like, maybe it's a comment like, oh my gosh, like that looks delicious. Do you offer it with almond milk or like, does it have a decaf uh, version? You know, you'd be really surprised by the amount of people that will come back and follow you or come back and comment on your stuff. If you actually take time to authentically engage with them, especially in a world that there's so much I don't know how to say this word, but not, not any authenticness. Um, so that's the first 10 minutes. The second one is to check in. So this is something that also is important for um, any algorithm on social media. So um, like I said, the more that you are doing things to think about the algorithm in mind, the more that your rank score is going to be up and the more that your content is going to be seen. So take time to check in with if people are commenting on your stuff. If people are commenting on your photos, your videos, your reels, all of your stuff, um, make sure you're thanking them. Make sure you're answering your questions just like you would with checking your email inbox for your business because um, not only that from the algorithm perspective, but you know it's you really have to view it as like a customer service perspective as well, um, which kind of aligns with the engagement. And then the third part of the 10 minute or the 30 minutes is play. So take 10 minutes per day, or if it's, you know, the 10 minutes out of uh, what you decide to do per week to go into these social media platforms and learn something. Maybe it's something that's relevant to your business, or maybe it's literally just learning something that is um, relevant to like your product, whatever it is, take time to go in and play. Cause there's so much fun stuff that's online and you know, Sometimes it'll be more than 10 minutes because it can be quite distracting, especially with TikTok. <laughs> um, so what I had noted here was embrace the latest features in Instagram. So um, there is another article that I included in the Excel document that you're going to get after this webinar that talks about how you can do Instagram Reels. So if you don't know what Reels are, it's another feature that's on Instagram. So we've talked about posting onto your page, we're going to talk about Instagram stories. We talked about Instagram TV, and now we're also talking about reels. Um, there are these latest features that Instagram has that I encourage you to at least take a look at and play with and have fun with because it's going to help you to engage with your follower base. And that's what people are using nowadays. And this next one that I have here is to consider promotions. So Make sure before you're doing any type of paid advertisement that you know who your target market is. It's really important that um, if you have a social media strategy that you, um, how can I say this? You make sure that you're not basically pouring your money down the sink and that you have a clear idea of who you wanna target. If you haven't done any promotions before and you know, you're just starting out or maybe you just haven't started them yet, what I always suggest doing is to follow the 80-20 rule. So what this means, a lot of content creators share this, is 80% of your content, make it so that it is like fun, organic, um, light call to action. So a light call to action on something could be, let's say you write an, a blog post or something and you're sharing it on your Instagram page. The call to action would be that, you know, you want them to check out your link in bio and you want them to read that article. So the call to action could be learn more. That'd be kind of like a light call to action. But if you have a paid promotion, you're going to want a hard call to action. So this is your 20%. A lot of times with business owners that I speak with, every piece of content that they have out there is a hard call to action of buy now or, you know, purchase this product. I'm not saying that it's not important to do that because obviously, you know, you're on social media for a reason. You do want to see return on investment. However, it is important to think that social media is social. Um, people are on there to, you know, have fun, to engage. So I actually wanted to ask everybody that was on this call. I can't, I'm not going into the chat because I get distracted really easily, but um, wanted to ask all of you, what do you think? Do you think in your experience or, you know, have you done ads before that you have seen that it has been worth it to do um, social media ads and maybe sharing with other people that are on this chat, um, 
yeah, like what you liked about it and what you learned from running social media ads. Would love to know that. And I just noted here as well, in the Excel document at the end of the slides, you are going to see a link that is for a phenomenal resource called Facebook Blueprint. So this is actually directly from Facebook. Blueprint is um, an online learning portal where you can learn how to basically do anything on your Facebook business page. And then also because Facebook owns Instagram, you can learn all of that stuff through there. So there's one specific link that I put in that for you to learn how you can do a Facebook ad from your page. So there's actually two ways that you can do a Facebook ad. You can do a Facebook ad from your Facebook page and you can do it through what's called Facebook Business Manager that has an ads manager portal. I always suggest when you're first starting out, do your ads through your Facebook page because it can be kind of overwhelming to go into the ads manager and there's a lot going on. So that's a one hour uh, video. If you click that link, it's a one hour Facebook uh, tutorial for you to check out. So now that we've kind of talked about generating a following, um, we're gonna talk a bit about hashtagging. So hashtags are used basically in your content to help people find what they're looking for. So you wanna ensure that the hashtags that you have that are on your posts are relevant. And you wanna make sure that when you're hunting down for like basically looking for other hashtags that um, the accounts of people are active. So for example, for me, if I'm looking for somebody that is, you know, a small business owner, um, let me go to the next slide. Here we go. Um, I'm gonna search something like maybe support local or like small business. And when you go in there, you can actually follow the hashtags that people are using. So this is important because you wanna make sure that you're using relevant um, hashtags in there. So. I'm going to ask everybody to grab their phones, get their phones out and log into their Instagram app or just sign into your Instagram app if you have it. And I'm going to ask you to click the home button that's on the left hand bottom panel. So when you click that, there's going to be a search button that's to the left of that. Can you click that search button? And you're gonna see it's hard because um, I can't do screen sharing on the computer for Instagram, but um, you should see a search button that looks exactly like this. And on there, you're gonna see, um, once you actually click into the search, so once the cursor is in there, you're gonna see top, accounts, tags, and places. So you can actually search whatever hashtag you want to see if it's basically got a lot of views. So let's say for example, you, you um, search support local, it's showing, and then make sure you click tags after you've typed in the word. It's showing the first hashtag that comes up is 25.5 million posts that are using that hashtag on Instagram. So this is important because you wanna make sure that the hashtags that you are using have a lot of posts. The other reason is because you can actually go in and you can follow hashtags just like you can follow people on Instagram. So it's kind of cool because if you click on the support local hashtag, you'll have the full grid of everybody that's using that support local hashtag and you can go in and you can surf the web. So in that 10 minutes of play time, you can see what other people are doing that are using that hashtag get content ideas, and you can follow that hashtag so that literally when you are scrolling through your Instagram um, newsfeed or page, um, you will see things that have that hashtag just like you'll see people. So this is just a reminder for me to remind you guys that um, today's takeaway tool, so the Excel document, it has a hashtag section um, for you to start creating a library. So one thing that I always suggest doing is once you've bulked your content into those four themes, to go in and to actually create um, a list or a library of hashtags that are relevant to your business so that you can be using those. And then you don't have to go and look them up every single time. They're already created there for you. So while we have our cell phones still out and we're still into our Instagram app, 
Um, I wanted to share a little bit on Instagram stories. So Instagram stories are, um, if you read a lot of articles and see where people are at nowadays, people are looking there. Um, people are statistically looking into your stories and they're wanting to find information about your products. This is a great way of, or services, uh, showcasing that and making it fun for your followers and also for engaging with your followers. Um, so if you don't know how to get to where Instagram stories is, again, if you're at that little home button that's on your Instagram page and you hit the plus button that's on the top right, it's going to pull up a menu of things. And for some reason, of course, now it's not working. There we go. Um, it's going to pull up a menu of things that is going to ask you what you want to post. So it could be that you want to make a post on your grid. It could be that you're wanting to post in your story story highlight, Instagram TV, or reel. So all those things that we talked about are pulled up through that menu. So one thing that I always suggest to help your stories get more views is to play the game of shrinking down your hashtags. Um, so let's say, for example, you've hit the plus sign, you've gone into your story, you've gone into your library, you've uploaded the picture that you want to do, or you've taken the, the picture that you that you want live, that you want to go into your Instagram story, you can actually swipe up. So once you have your image or your video in there, you can swipe up and you can search or click hashtag. So there's a menu that will come up. It'll ask you about location. It'll ask you, ask you about if you want to tag somebody in it, if you want to hashtag something. There's tons of different things that you can select to drive engagement with people that are looking at your stories. So if you click the one that says hashtag, you can actually insert one that's in there and make it relevant to your content. So for example, for this Accelerate Learning series, on the Accelerate Summit Instagram page, I did digital marketing. And then what you can actually do once you type in your hashtag, so let's say, for example, you just put Barry and you have it there. You can actually use your fingers to shrink the hashtag down and it will completely be gone and then it won't make the aesthetic of your post look like it has too much going on. So you can add multiple things in here that you want to shrink that will help in the long run just get your story more views. Um, if you want, you can leave the hashtag out so that people can see it, but this is just a little tip that I use that I do for all my stuff. And it, it honestly does help to get my stories more views. The other thing that you can do is you can add the location. This is really important as well. Um, so for Accelerate Summit, again, when you're in that stories feature, swipe up, you can hit location and you can actually search out the location. So you'll type it in there. Sandbox Center is what I wanted to do for that one. And then you can click that in there and if you like, you can shrink it as well, <laughs> or you can keep it, whatever you want. But um, it just makes it so that your stories will get more views. And while we're still on this slide, I will mention as well, with that swipe up um, feature that's on the Instagram stories, I encourage you to really play on that and see you know, what you can use in there to engage your audience. There's a poll feature that you can use, that you can ask questions of people, um, you can ask questions with this one. You can do a quiz. You could ask people like, what is their favorite type of latte or whatever it is. Um, but it's just a fun way of creating some engagement on there instead of just, you know, always having that hard call to action there. So now that we've talked about stories, um, let's get into giveaways. So if you haven't done a giveaway before um, on social media, here are some of the benefits that's gonna help you with doing a giveaway. So it's gonna help you grow your audience. It's gonna help you boost engagement. You can also use it to tease an upcoming product or service for a future release. And it's gonna help you to build relationships. So how exactly do you do a giveaway? This is an example of um, a local entrepreneurship center that did a giveaway. And we actually collected a whole bunch of products from um, creatives and local entrepreneurs, and we announced the giveaway. So how a giveaway works is obviously, number one, I'll read this because the font's very tiny, um, but you're announcing that you're doing a giveaway. 
So for this one, it was specifically for female entrepreneurs that were at that entrepreneurship center that we wanted to share products and it was around Christmas time. So we announced the giveaway, number one. That's how you announce it. Number two, what's inside? So you wanna make a list of what is included or what you are actually giving away for that giveaway. So I won't read all of them, but um, like an eye pillow from Live More Project, um, orange dark chocolate spread from Louisella, the vegan one. We had all those products that were listed in there. And then after that, we talked about how you can enter. So usually for giveaways, people will have the number one thing of how to enter is that you have to follow them. So you have to follow our page who's making the giveaway and follow the other people that are part of the giveaway. So this really helps for creating collaboration online and getting more people to, to basically see, like have more eyes on your page and have it to be like relevant people that are gonna be seeing your stuff as well. So once you talk about how to enter, the other thing that you can do, so number one, getting people to follow your page. Another thing that people will do for giveaways is they'll ask you to um, tag, like maybe it's one or two or three people in the post. So literally that means that they're gonna go in, they're gonna hit the comment button and then they're gonna tag their friend. Um, and then another thing that you can do for a bonus entry is you can ask them to share this post in their stories. And if they do, to tag you and to tag the other pages that are in there. So the other way that you want to close off your giveaway is just to talk about when it's going to be closing. So that way people have a, sheer understanding of when it's going to be when it's going to be finished and then also when you're going to be announcing the prizes um i think that that is it in terms of the giveaway and obviously you want to make sure that you have your hashtags in there and oh yeah that was the last thing i wanted to say for this one um i included a link that is in the excel document that you're going to get after this presentation that has a link on how you can do a giveaway and then the other part of it is you're you might be wondering oh my gosh, all these people are now being tagged in this giveaway. How do I manage that? And how do I announce who's going to win this? I also put a link that's in the Excel document, which has a free website that you can use where basically you can link it with your giveaway so that it will like sort things so that you can decide who wins. Um, so it's basically just a really easy giveaway tool that you can use. So now I just wanted to say that <laughs> For me, it's been really hard to not see people in person. And if we had an Accelerate Learning Series event, um, it would be like, we would have our talks and then we would have our networking portion um, and we would be having our coffees and just getting to know each other and getting to know our businesses online. So I was thinking about, you know, what could we do to have everybody still have the benefit of connecting on here, even though it's just me that's talking today. And so, what I would like to ask all of you is if you are comfortable sharing your information um, with everyone that's going to be on the call, I will encourage you during this time to put a message in the chat with your name, if you have a website for your business, what the website is, um, and then also the social media handles that you are trying to promote right now. So that what I'm going to do is after this call, I'm going to save the chat. And I'm going to take all of that information and put it into an Excel document. And we're going to email that out to everybody so that after this is done, you can go through, you can follow each other, you can connect with each other online. And more importantly, I'm going to challenge you that if you want to do this to basically my challenge is two people in uh, the Excel list that I'm going to send out, or you can do it literally just now through the chat, whatever you prefer. My challenge is for you to reach out to two people to connect and to do some type of online collaboration that's going to be relevant for you to basically help you with your business and to help the other person with their business. So it could be that you're going to do a giveaway. It could be that, um, you know, you're going to talk about how you're going to do some type of like guest blog and you're going to be sharing each other's content. Whatever it is that you want to do, um, that's my challenge to you is to reach out to two people because um, if you haven't been able to tell, I'm extremely extroverted and I just want to make sure that everybody gets everything out of being able to do this. Um, 
so yeah, I'll give everybody a minute to kind of um, do that and get their information uh, popped in there. And while everyone's doing that, I would love to announce the, the, the oops, the next webinar that we have coming up that's next week, that is actually the final one of our webinar series. Um, it's going to be with Dustin and Chris, and it's going to be the best of both worlds. So we're going to be covering quick and simple benefits of analytics and SEO. So this is for you if you have a website and you maybe want to have a little bit more understanding of how to actually make sense of the numbers that are coming in through your Google Analytics. Um, and making it simple so that you know you can understand it and it not be so foreign. And then Dustin's going to cover email marketing. So um, this is something that we're really excited about and um, something that he's actually gotten really excited about in the last little bit. And um, he's brought the benefits to our team. And we've been helping a lot of business owners within the ecosystem within Simcoe County to help with their email marketing campaigns, especially now with everything that's going on. So um, maybe towards the end of this, at the end of the Q&A, we will uh, put the link in the chat for the next webinar so that you can make sure that you register because I should note the registering for it is different than the link that's for this webinar. And I think that is it. So thank you so much for attending and interacting. And if you want to connect with me again, here is my information and I will pass it over to Dave now to get into our Q&A portion. Thank you, Mel. Uh, once again, fantastic information as we uh, always we always get from you when, when you present for us, Mel. So very much appreciated. Thanks for sharing today. Uh, folks, uh, I see that um, a lot of people are adding their details into the chat. So that's wonderful. Uh, if you have questions and you want to add them in there, please do so. We did have some that were added in as you were speaking, Mel, and, and the wonderful community that we have uh went ahead and, uh, and answered some of them but i'd love to get your perspective on them i'll just bring them up here um so you started out by speaking earlier on about speaking about algorithms and um a question from sue came in are there algorithms for linkedin and and if so how are they similar or different from facebook and instagram yeah, for sure. I will answer that. And then the other thing that I just remembered is I kept talking about this Excel sheet. I'd love to just share my uh, screen and show that as well so that everybody, when they get it, has an understanding of, of what's on there. Sure, good um, idea. Yeah, so for social media algorithms, the two links that I put in the sheet are specifically for Facebook and Instagram. And I'll be honest, it's because that's where I've done the majority of my work with clients. Um, there are algorithms that are set in place for every um, platform. So you can do a simple Google search or watch like YouTube tutorials, whatever it is that's your style of learning to go in and to learn about um, like basically just the basics of LinkedIn and, you know, best practices maybe. Like for Facebook, there's certain things that like I remember just like, you know, Facebook doesn't love links. So if every single thing that you are posting is an outbound link to go to like an article or something that's off of that actual page, um, that can make it challenging for people to consistently see your stuff. So for LinkedIn, there's probably, you know, certain things that are on there that are just little, little things that if you learn how to do and just follow with like your best practices of posting, um, it'll give you that, you know, understanding. Um, so hopefully that helps. I'm sorry, I don't know too, too much about LinkedIn, but this is the, um, the sheet that I keep talking about that I'm going to have everybody get sent to. So the first part of it is a actual content calendar, which is basically for you to pre-plan what it is that you're going to be posting about for your social media pages. So in here is where you can put the theme. So like Marlene was talking about creating those branded content themes in here is going to going to be where you have your written content. And then in here is where, where you're going to put your hashtags and here's going to be, you know, if you have a photo library, maybe on your computer or in a Google drive so that you can indicate which picture or video you're going to be using for that post. And then if there are any partners that you're going to be tagging in that post and the status of the post. So this is just like a general content calendar. You can make it your own. 
Um, you can go in and change the dates depending on the month. The second portion of this is for me to encourage you to brainstorm your four to five themes of what you're going to post about. So again, maybe it's that like, for example, you have an all natural skincare and, you know, one theme is going to be all just educational posts about um, the ingredients. The second part is going to be um, business updates. So maybe it's you talking about um, updates about, you know, if you're open or not during COVID, things like that. So have at least... I mean, I wouldn't say like lots, but have four to five themes. And then once you've determined what those themes are, you can go in and you can do your hashtag research. So this is just some hashtags that I put in there for you guys, um, for if you're in Simcoe County and you are a local business that you maybe would wanna use. And then suggestion would be to what we learned today of how to search the hashtags to go in and just plop those in there so that you can remember to use them in your posts. And then here are all the resources. So the Facebook and the Instagram algorithm learning are both um, blog posts for you to check out. This is everything you need to know about a Facebook Live, the giveaway tool, your Instagram TV, Reels. Um, this is how to run a, a Facebook ad from your page. Um, I believe it's a one hour tutorial. It's very clear and concise. Uh, this is an article of the benefits of giveaways and then this is the Facebook blueprint tool. So this link has a ton of learning that you can go through at your own pace. Um, Answer the public is the keyword research tool. Canva, I didn't talk about, um, but it was talked about from the team in previous webinars. It's a basic graphic design tool that's very, if I can use it, <laughs> you can use it. Um, and this is the very basic video YouTube tutorial of how to do an Instagram post. So all of that to say is gonna be what you're going to be getting. Um, and I just wanted to show that so that when you get it, you have an idea of uh, where everything is. Yeah, fantastic, Mel. I mean, I, I think um, I just wanna say a quick thank you to you. It takes time and effort to put that sort of thing together to share with the community. So thank you very, very much. And, and folks, uh, you, know, um, I, you know, I can't say enough good things about our digital service squad. Uh, and I and I hope that uh, after this, uh, you know, if you are looking for experts in in the fields of, uh, of not just social media but anything that our team covers, that you you consider reaching out to them and uh, and working with them because they are truly a, a very professional team, and we've been delighted working with them at the City of Barry since I think uh, September of 2019. So far, Mel, that uh, that it's been it's been ongoing. Yeah. So long may it continue. Um, so thanks again, Mel. Back to the questions. Um, so a really good one here uh, from Sarah Jane in terms of. Uh, timing of going live, uh, you know, is there a, an optimum time? You base it on your analytics when your your customers are, or your target market is most online, or is there just a, a good time to go live? Yeah, good question. Um, so with clients, I mean, a lot of them have gone live around noon, and then a, a lot of them have gone live like after dinner time, like between five and six. Um, however, I think it entirely depends on like your business, when you think that your followers are online and then going on there and just testing it out. Like, um, you're not going to know until you go in and do it. So there's actually a way on Facebook on through the left-hand panel that you can go in and you can click insights and on insights, you can get an idea of when your followers are online. And it gives you an understanding. It'll show you um, what time that is the best time for them to be online. So I would suggest check there first and then do your lives, figure out, you know, are people engaging at this hour? Maybe it's better to do it in the morning for you. Um, it depends on your audience, right? For sure, for sure. Uh, Joy, I see you have your hand up there. Uh, did you want to unmute and have a question? Yeah, hi, morning, everyone. Thank you so much, uh, Melissa. That was just awesome. 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 Um, just wondering about if you want to do a shout out on an Instagram post and I should probably just Google this, uh, but <laughs> you're here. So, um, yeah. if, if you, if I'm going to do my Instagram post and do a, a shout out to say you, you, thanks so much. I just do at Melissa Polly. That's yep. it. Okay. Yep. So, are you doing it like in you're doing it in your story, right? Right. 
like in yeah, my grid, so, in my Instagram grid, right? So I, I yeah. post every three days. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah. So if you're doing anything that is like a, a post on your page, um, what you can yeah. do is before you have hit it. So once you've uploaded your image or your video, there's yep. going to be a thing, uh, a, kind of like a list on the bottom that shows location, which um, yep. I always suggest put that in there, if yep. you, especially yep. if you have a business location. Yep. Um, yep. So put that in there. And then there should be a thing that says tag. Right. So you can okay. actually click that. And then on your photo, you can tag business owners um, to make okay. sure that they're tagged in that. And then if it's in your story, um, you can just hit your at symbol and um, start typing the name of the account of the person that you want to tag. And you can also shrink them too. So when oh, I was talking about doing that, right. the shrinking, you can mm -hmm. shrink whatever, whatever you want. So if you don't, if you're tagging like 10 people in there and yeah. you want them to share something that's like very aesthetically pleasing about an announcement or something, you can put, tag all those people and shrink them down and then you can't see them. Right, right. It <laughs> doesn't look still like you're the, not picking someone special, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then they, they'll get a message in their Instagram inbox right. that you've tagged them and then they can right. actually share it. Perfect. Okay. That's excellent. Good information. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mel. My Thanks pleasure. for the question, Joy. Um, <laughs> yes. Folks, just while Melissa was chatting there, I did uh, put the link into the next session in the chat into next week's Accelerate Learning Series. Um, so please uh, do, do register. And if you need that link later on, just let me know and we'll email it to you. A um, question from Laura re regarding uh, locations on Instagram. So if one wants to have uh, their location available as a check-in, uh, somewhere you can check in or their clients can check in on Instagram, is there a process for setting that up? So let me try to understand the question. So if um, a customer is coming to visit you and they want to check in on Instagram? Yes. Is there a way... Is there, is it, is it necessary or is there a way for, for me as a, as a, I guess, as a business owner to say, Hey, Instagram, recognize my location so that people can check in here. That's a good one. I would say like, if they're, if they're making a post, then they can always just search up the location of the business and they can add it in there. Like, let's say I'm going to Laura's place to go get some photography photos I can make a post and then I can tag her like the location of her business. Um, but in terms of like the check-in kind of like what you would do on Google, I don't know to be, okay. to be honest. I no, know that you fair. can, you can put in like any location, but um, yeah. Huh. I'm going to look that yeah, up. <laughs> I think you're right. I think in likelihood and, and I see we, Laura Bamber from our team is, as, as uh, answered that as well. I think it is more to do with, uh, you know, the, making sure it's connected to the Google listing, making sure that you maybe you, you need, uh, it's a better idea to have Google My Business set up. Um, so that's certainly something you guys can speak to as well. Yeah, and like Chris and Dustin could maybe speak on that next week too, because in terms of Google stuff, I'm not too <laughs> guru on that, but I mean, mm. I think it would be nice if, if that was connected for sure, because maybe that would help with SEO too. I think so. And actually, we've had a comment from from Taylor in the chat here as well, that that's when uh, their business started to show up was when they uh, when they made a Google My Business page. So I think uh, I think that's the the, the root of that answer. Um, okay, perfect. Thank you, team. <laughs> yes. Go team. Go community. Um, Sarah Jane, you have your hand up. Did you want to ask a question? Go ahead. Absolutely love this. This is so useful. So today's uh one of today's questions is what does engagement mean is it likes is it comments is the is it the number of words in the comments because yeah i can't figure this out and maybe the engagement varies for each um platform yeah i love that question i'm so happy that you answered it i should have clarified that at the beginning um i'm actually going to pull up my screen to show you um, bear with me. So to answer your question, yeah, engagement is a combination of, um, everything. So like likes, comments, um, it literally could be that a person has, like, I don't know if you've noticed this, it's quite creepy, but 
even if you don't like a picture, but you've zoomed in on it or something on Instagram, then you'll keep seeing the post from that person because you've actually engaged with it. So engagement can be like all of that stuff. So um, hopefully that answers your question in short. It's, it's all of all of the above. Um, but one thing that I wanted to show everybody as well is so on your Facebook page, and you can do this on Instagram as well, is you can actually go into insights. And so this kind of answers the when should I go live question as well, because insights is where you want to go so that you can have an overview of when people are on your page. Um, so you can actually go in and you can click like the last seven days or you can click yesterday or I guess that's a new feature or the last 28 days. So this is data that you can use that will kind of help you to know when you're going to go online. And when you scroll down, you can see which posts are getting the most engagement. So in here, it shows reach and then it shows engagement. So engagement on Facebook is considered reactions, comments, and shares. Post clicks are also in there and then your organic slash paid reach. So to me, I look at this and go, oh, people really, really liked this um, making waves campaign with the eco-op students because it got like almost like 265 people. Um, so that's kind of to give you an overview of where you can find information when you go onto your page. So definitely go into your insights and click around on there because it's going to give you lots of data that you can use. Great. Thanks, Mel. And we have time for just one more question here. A question from Sue. Um, going back to the subject around uh, Facebook Lives and videos, how much of a difference does it make to go live versus, versus posting a video that you pre-recorded on your phone? Good one. Um, so in this Facebook algorithm 2021 article that I was just researching and through looking up, up stuff on YouTube, what it was saying was that lives are something that helps you to get further in the algorithm so if you have time to maybe do like one a week um would highly suggest doing it it also brings kind of like a personality and a face to your brand right especially now everyone right now is like majorly bombarded with content um more than ever and it's really nice to go on and do a live and like introduce yourself or maybe it's you're doing some type of like tutorial like I said um it doesn't mean that doing videos is bad at all but one thing that I would suggest looking at is if you're posting videos to find out like how much engagement it is getting because maybe you need to tweak how long they are or maybe you need to um go on and figure out that it's a bet there's a better time to post it um but having videos up there is great too. Just, I always suggest like try to do lives if you can, if you have it within your capacity. Okay, great. Thanks, Mel. I'm going to squeeze in one more question here. Thanks for the extra time. But uh, Laura Lee, you had your hand up. So did you have a question there? Hello, how's it going? Sorry, I was doing some other things, so I didn't have my camera on. Um, when you uh, went to your Facebook page, Melissa, I don't think people know this, but if you go to your insights and scroll down to people, it will actually show you percentages of the age groupings. So it'll show you what your biggest market is. And it'll also um, give information on what days of the week they're on, what times of the, of the day they're on. So that will really give you some focused information on when you can reach those people the best. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. That And that's mm -hmm. so important, right? Like we want to make sure that if we're, we're talking about a hair product that we're not only reaching, you know, somebody that's not in our target audience. So that's awesome. And that's really Thank helpful you. for ads too, right? If you're going to be running any ads. Yeah. And like we were saying um, with your ads, like, I forgot to say this, but you know, if you're intimidated by doing ads, maybe start out with just doing one for like $10 or something. But I would encourage to have a strategy or incorporate within your social media strategy to, to have, you know, those ads in there um, and measure them and test them and see what's working and what people are liking. You know, not, not everything that you put out there, people are going to love. Sometimes I create stuff. I'm like, Ooh, people are going to like eat this up. And then it gets like, no, nothing. 
So you got to go out there and just test and just see what works and what doesn't, right? Indeed. Uh, folks, that's about all we have time for today. Uh, thank you again, Mel, for a really interesting uh, and informative session uh, and, and a fun session. So thanks again for that. Um, folks, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, seems just looking at the chat and based on the, the, the feedback here that everyone uh, got a lot out of this session. Uh, so um, I have, as I say, shared the link to next week's uh, fourth and final Accelerate Learning Series webinar um, in, the, in the chat. Uh, so please do look that up. And we look forward to seeing you all again next week. And in the meantime, have a wonderful week and feel free to reach out to the Small Business Center at any time. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye now. Bye-bye.